Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for being here. As always, it is very much appreciated. Today I'm finally sitting down to film the try to recap that I said I was going to upload last week but ended up taking a break from social media and so here we are now. I hope y'all don't hate me too much. But grab your favorite drink. Today I'm drinking a homemade latte and I used maple syrup to naturally sweeten it. I got the idea from Miss Juliana of Bikinis and Bellinis herself, so I'll tag her down below. But other than that, let's get into it. So we are going to jump into some questions that y'all asked me through one of my stories a few weeks ago and then at the end I might do a little highlight reel of the trimester. So the first question somebody asked, what is your favorite study tip? My favorite study tip of the try was given to me by an upper try and I was telling him how overwhelmed I felt by some of the courses PowerPoints and just how many there were and how I didn't really feel like I was learning anything, at least by listening to the lectures. And so he said, don't overwhelm yourself with trying to only listen to the lectures. If you study better, simply reading the slides and taking your own notes and, you know, making study guides based off of that, then do that. And so I actually adopted that late, 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 late in the trimester for microbiology and physiology. And that really, really helped me because there were some weeks where I would get behind on lectures and I previously would let that stress me out a lot I would think oh my gosh I'm you know I'm not gonna learn it or oh my gosh you know I, I would watch it really fast and then I still wouldn't really learn anything so my favorite study tip to summarize was if reading through the lecture slides is faster more efficient for you do that don't be afraid to I always tell students this don't be afraid to try different things out you don't have to do it um, you don't have to study the same way for each class and you don't have to study how you think you need to study. Don't put pressure on yourself to study a certain way when it may be more efficient and beneficial for you to study a different way. All right, the next question, somebody asked what were your favorite classes and what were your least favorite classes? And it's hard to pick just one for each of those because I love and hate them all for very specific <laughs> reasons. Um, but one of my favorite classes was chiropractic methods lab and also biomechanics lab because we were able to be hands-on and we were learning how to palpate. We were learning how to move the body, move the joints, feel the joints, and that was exciting. So I feel like that's kind of the easiest answer. But um, another class that I really, really enjoyed was biochem. What? I never in my life thought I would be saying that, but biochem 2 was way more interesting to me than biochem 1 and I did better so I, I caught on faster I mean so I learned faster in biochem 2 than I did in biochem 1. Biochem 1 I don't know if it was challenging just because it was challenging or if it was because I had never taken a biochemistry class in my life but biochem 2 just seemed to click with me more and it was it was um I don't know it seemed to be more interesting it was about certain it he tied in certain diseases and conditions that made it a little bit more real life and we learned a lot about vitamins and I don't know it just seemed a little bit more applicable or similar to things I had learned in the past now my least favorite courses were two classes that I actually thought were going to be my favorites and that would have to be physiology and microbiology and I talked about them in this last in the last question about studying, but I really expected to enjoy those classes. One, because micro is, I don't know, I thought it was going to have a lot of interesting topics and it did. It did have topics, but I'll tell you what I mean in a second. But secondly, physiology, I thought I was going to like that because my undergrad degree is in exercise, applied exercise physiology. So I was like, oh, I'm going to love this. And I did, but there were some things that I just really didn't like. And and it, it's a common theme between both of them, and that is it's so much information 
at one time that I never felt like I had the opportunity to soak it all in and learn it. And so I think because those two were kind of my most overwhelming courses, I ended up not enjoying them, which is really sad, but you know, that's just part of it. That's part of grad school. Um, but yeah, those were kind of, th those are my thoughts on my favorite and least favorite classes. Somebody else asked, uh, which class was the toughest and uh, I don't even know how to answer that because each class was tough for different reasons, but I'm going to highlight a few of them and highlight the reasons why they were tough. So hopefully it'll help you combat the toughness for when you're in try to. So for, um, for physiology and microbiology, it's just a ton of information. So if week, if by week two, you're feeling like this isn't working for me, whatever study method you're using, like it doesn't working for me, try to change it up. Don't wait until later in the try to change it up. So if you listen to their live lectures and you find that that isn't working, maybe try listening to them recorded so you can speed them up. Or if you're only looking at the slides, but you feel like you need some more help, go to tutoring, etc. Just try to change up the way that you're, be adaptable. And I've talked about this before as it's it's such a beautiful example being a chiropractic student of adaptation because you know as chiropractors we help the body to adapt and as chiropractic students like that pro that process of learning how to adapt starts as a student it's it's not just once we become chiropractors it's right now so try to learn how to adapt to each class that you're in um so for micro and physio just know they they may be they may not be but they may be very overwhelming in the sense of how many PowerPoint slides there are, how many resources they're giving you, etc. So just try to be adaptable and you may have to put some extra time and effort into those. Gross anatomy, for me personally, uh, the tests did not seem to match a lot of the information we were given, so that kind of made exams tougher. I like to think that I I'm pretty good at gross anatomy, but this really tested me. So um, yeah, that was just a difficult course because sometimes there were things that I wasn't expecting on a test. And I, I think, um, you know, that's grad school, so I'm not gonna complain about it, but just know that in that class, don't be afraid to ask for help and talk to your other peers about what you're struggling with so that y'all can study together. Um, I know I would chat with Skylar, my BFF, about we we would kind of study together in a sense. We didn't study together all the time for that class, but we would um, talk about concepts that we were really struggling with or that we, fig we thought he was really going to test over so that way we knew it in and out. Um, and also, I did not take advantage of this, but going to the professor and in gross anatomy and talking to them about what you could do better. Don't be afraid to do that. Learn from my mistake. And thirdly, tutoring. If I were you, I would go to tutoring for gross anatomy because these, these tutors are students and they've had, typically they've had the professor before. So don't be afraid to um, go to tutoring for that as well. The next question somebody asked, how do you study? I'm gonna answer this in specifics to try to, because the way that I'm gonna study for try three is going to be completely different than try two. Um, and that's because try two, I didn't know what hit me until like the middle of the try. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, what I'm doing isn't working, but I didn't feel like I had the time to completely change my whole routine. So I'm changing it for try three, but for try two, I studied, I mean, every day pretty much. So I would either attend live lecture or I would watch the recording. I would take notes and specifically for biochem, a lot of people said, don't watch his lectures, don't watch his lectures, but that is how I learned. Literally, that is how I learned. So I would watch his recorded lectures on two, three times speed or whatever it is and take notes 
and I learned the information that way the best. I tried doing flashcards. I would do flashcards the night or two before the exam. I think I told you on one of my previous videos for almost all of my classes, I would study. And then like the night before the exam, I would use cahoots or quizlets that either I created or my peers created. And I would just do those then. But to actually learn the information for the first time for biochem, I would listen to his lectures and take notes. So for me, that worked the best. But for other classes, again, I would either watch the recording or watch live lecture, take notes as we went. Um, later in the trimesters, I kind of faded off watching the lectures for micro and physio because I found that I could just be a lot more efficient with my time by reading the slides and actively taking notes. Um, I'm trying to think, oh, um, for chiro methods and biomechanics, kind of the same thing for chiropractic methods, he would have a live lecture and I would either watch that live and take notes or I would watch the recording and take notes. Biomechanics, all of the lectures for us were already recorded. So um, I would turn those on, you know, a faster speed and take notes. So it's all nothing crazy. I wouldn't study like crazy. I would just honestly try to was the first try that I felt like I was, I don't know if y'all heard the saying of, of it feels chiropractic school feels like a fire hydrant is just blowing you in the face and you're trying to catch it all, but you can't and it's just coming out too fast. Right? So I felt like try to was the first time I really experienced that. Um, Anyways, oh, but the last thing I was going to say, and I talked about this, I think in a previous video, is that for labs, you've got to palpate outside of lab. You have got to palpate outside of lab. I'm so passionate about lower tries hearing that because I promise you, if you do, you will grow leaps and bounds. So either get together with each other or get together with your family or your own friends palpate and don't just palpate and say oh yeah 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 like I got it I got it no palpate I want you counting either in your head or out loud preferably counting the spinous processes counting the TVPs verbalizing what you're feeling and that's mainly for static palpation or chiropractic methods and then for motion palpation y'all have to talk out what you're doing and what your contact point is your segmental contact point is your uh, line of drive, what you're feeling for, talk it out, out loud. And I promise you, you will ace your exams. Like you, it, it, it will be become muscle memory for you, but you have to do that outside of class and you have to be, you have to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You have to continue to do it. You can't just do it once a week and walk away. You have to continue to palpate throughout the week. So definitely, work that into your schedule. I would palpate at least five times a week, if not seven, you know, it, at least five days a week, if not seven days a week. The goal was always every single day, but you know, sometimes on the weekends it's 10 o'clock at night and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, you know, didn't even palpate today. Um, but at least five days out of the week, if not seven, you need to be palpating as much as possible, as many different spines as possible, etc. And the last thing I'll say with that is I covered this in the last video, but I just want to remind you for your lab practicals, time yourself when you practice. So if you get X amount of moves in X amount of minutes, then y'all, I missed this up on the last video, so I'm just gonna make something up. If you have five moves in five minutes, then practice it, practice five moves in four minutes. Because what this does is it shifts your perspective. So for one of the classes I practice, I would practice like a minute less than I actually had in the exam. And so when I walked into my practical, it wasn't as intimidating. The time was the least of my worries because I was like, I can do five moves in four minutes. So I can definitely do five moves in five minutes. So the time was one less thing I had to worry about. So make sure for your practicals that you're practicing. Um, either with more moves in a certain amount of time or with um, the amount of moves that you're going to have on the practical in a less amount of time. Somebody asked, did you name your gross anatomy cadaver? No, actually we did not. That's, that's all I can say. We just never named our cadaver. I don't think any of us felt 
like we should. We just respected the body as the body was presented to us and and yeah, we, we did not name our cadaver. All right, the next one, someone asked, how do you prioritize and allot time for your classes? Again, <laughs> I've kind of said this throughout this whole video, but try to was just a different beast. So I, I, I hate to say this, but I never felt like I had a huge, like the best grasp on try to. And since I've kind of told y'all the struggles that I had in try to, I want to tell y'all how I think I could have combated that. I think I could have combated that by time managing my day on something other than a in in one place. So what I mean by that is for try three, I'm going to use Notion. Again, I don't know if this is going to work, but it's just something I'm going to try and everything is in one place there versus having stuff on my Google Calendar and in my um, scheduler, schedule, y'all know what I'm talking about, physical, calendar, planner, thank you, planner, that's the word, um, anyways, versus having things, and then in Blackboard and etc., I'm gonna have everything in Notion, because it can just get overwhelming throughout the day, y'all know how it is, as a student, you get down, you might feel really motivated, and then an hour into it, I'm just kind of like, oh shoot, I have to do this. Oh my gosh, I have to do this too. Well, hold on, let me look here, let me click. And so it was just a lot. Another thing is um, I turned off my Instagram notification, well, all of my social media notifications at the beginning of the trimester. So to see a notification, I have to actually log into Instagram. But something that one, one of my favorite people to follow, JC Marie Smith, um, she's a part of what we said podcast. I'll tag her down below, but something that she recommended was putting a time limit. I think that's what it's called on your phone for your apps. So my time, oh, what is it called? I don't know. It, I think it's called time limit. I don't know. It's in your settings if you have an iPhone. And basically all of my apps are inaccessible at 9 p.m. And they're inaccessible from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. And that's really helped me. I'm not going to lie. 9 p.m. sometimes I will get on it um I will get on it after 9 p.m. sometimes but what it's the the biggest place that I've found it helps is in the mornings because in the mornings when I when I open my phone the only notifications that can be sent to me are message text messages calls and then I think I have my alarm and I think that's it. I think that's it. So really just those three things, just in case somebody needs to call me, it's not shut down or whatever. But, um, so in the morning when I wake up, I don't have any notifications already on my phone. Like my phone, if I got a text that night or if I got a call that night, those are the only notifications. And usually if it, if it is a, a text, it's from my family or something. So I, that's really helped me in the mornings a lot more time to things I need to be doing versus, oh my gosh, I see that, you know, I have this email or this notification from Blackboard, like already putting me in kind of a sympathetic state, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, so anyways, yeah, I would say just blocking out my time on my phone has helped during this break. And I'm curious to see how it'll help going into try three. The last question somebody asked was, how did it compare to trimester one? What a sweet question. Well, if you have been watching this whole video, then you probably already know my answer to this. And that is that it was very different than trimester one, for me at least. Now, as we move forward in the program, you have to keep in mind that my experience in try to may be completely different than future students' experiences as we move closer to being in person. So my mostly online experience for try to, um, you know, was an experience that you may not ever have if you're watching this video years down the road. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, for me, it was completely different. I felt like it was a fire hydrant uh, blowing water 
at me. So, you know, and I couldn't catch it all, like I said earlier, but that's just the way it goes. I'm really looking forward to try three because we're getting into more hands-on classes, adjusting classes, and I am completely renewing the way that I'm going to be studying and my scheduling and all of that, which in my next video, I think my next video will be me going over how I'm prepping for Tri3 and what I'm planning on doing. And I'm really excited to share that with y'all. So the way I want to end this video is by highlighting some things, some of my favorite parts of Tri2. So one of those includes getting to palpate and learn about palpation and really wake up my hands and my fingers to what is to come with being a chiropractor. Um, another thing that happened was we got to be on campus. And so being on campus, you know, com comes with meeting more people, meeting more students. And that honestly was my favorite part was getting to learn about my classmates and get to know my classmates, study together, laugh together, cry together, whatever it may be. So that was my favorite part for sure. Another exciting thing is we had our white coat ceremony. So that was a, a cool milestone in the program. I also got to be a part of Parker seminars, which was such an honor. And yeah, th those are a few highlights from my trimester. I want to hear what your highlighted moments of your semester or trimester were in the comments down below or share them in a post or a story on Instagram and tag me. I would love to hear and celebrate with you some of your wins. Um, for my fellow Tri Twos, shout out you guys. We are making it and we are going into Tri Three next week, which is so exciting. I can't wait to meet more of you guys and learn from y'all. And yeah, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for joining me throughout before chiropractic school and throughout my journey through chiropractic school towards becoming a chiropractor. Please like this video and subscribe. Again, comment down below some of your wins and highlights from your semester and let me know what else you want to see. But other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.